Hi, hello, namaste friends. Welcome to our channel, A Civil Engineer. For more interesting videos like this, please do subscribe and press the bell icon. In this video, we are going to understand the difference between working stress and limit state methods. This is a very important topic in many interviews. So friends, here let us firstly understand uh, what about the working stress method. So here this working stress method history is basically it is the earliest codified design philosophy. It has been uh, formulated uh, around 100 years back. So it is a very old philosophy which we uh, use for the, within this working stress method. And it is still surviving in some countries including India as well. So in this method, the stresses will be limited to certain value so that the structure will remain safe. Or else, in other words, how can I can uh, define as uh, the stresses are limited under certain safe stress values, which is why it is called as a working stress method, or also it is uh, sometimes called as ASD method. ASD method, not in India, but in other countries, many follow that uh, allowable stress design method. So, this ASD or working stress method both are one and the same. Uh, so, coming to limit state method, if you see the history, this has been evolved in the recent 50 years ago. Uh, as an alternative to the working stress method and slowly this uh, gained the acceptance within the uh, engineers so once it gained the acceptance then people started uh, following it and they made specified codes for it and uh, everything has been done and people more or less like 90 percent beyond 90 percent people are following now limit state method because it has some advantages compared to working stress method and this does not mean that working stress method is uh, uh, disadvantageous it has its uh, merits as well compared to limit state method if you want to understand the meaning of this uh, the acceptable limit for a safety and serviceability requirements before failure occurs it is called as a some limit state so how we are defining this limit state friends it is some acceptable limit for any safety or serviceability before failing uh, any structure so that is called as the limit state the aim of this design is to achieve acceptable probabilities that the structure will not become unfit for the use for which it is intended that is uh, it will not reach a uh, limit state so once it doesn't reach the limit state then uh, it is considered to be fit for uh, any use this is why it is called as a limit state method friends so friends this is basically called as a load and resistance factor design method as well so which is also called as lrfd method in uh, as i mentioned how asd is called in other countries in those countries only the corresponding limit state method is uh, called as the uh, load and resistance frame design method so let us get into the differences between these two methods so uh, coming to uh, working stress method uh, so in this method the material follows the hooks law as stress is not allowed to cross the yield limit so here yielding limit we are making it as the uh, threshold limit so if here we assume that if the stress in any material or in any member if it crosses this point then we consider it to be some failure but whereas in limit state method we allow this beyond the uh, yielding point so uh, this is allowed to cross the limit uh, beyond the yielding limit so if you see the stress strain curve friends uh, i have already made a video for this stress strain curve for steel and uh, for concrete like that so if you want to go through it or if you want to understand this uh, video better first i would recommend you to watch that video firstly so yeah, for a quick reference i have given the link for that video in the description you go to it you will see that video and come back to this video and you will understand it much better i promise so this is the uh, method in which we allow the failure uh, we or else we consider the member to be failed uh, once it reaches beyond the yielding limit so to what extent that will discuss further and next thing friends uh, in this method in the working stress method it follows the linear stress strain behavior of the uh, both the materials so either it could be of concrete or steel and this material capabilities are underestimated to a large extent because as we are considering the yielding point as the failure or allowable limit so this will uh, give us uh, an understanding that we are not utilizing that particular member to the maximum uh, capacity of the structure 
so if you just and uh, see the stress strain curve uh, for steel for suppose here you will see something like this no friends so the only we use uh, this portion so only this portion is used in working stress method but this plastic region whatever is there beyond this area this plastic region we are not at all using it and we in addition to this so whatever be the fy value uh, the yielding stress value so this fy value we consider it as the limiting point for our stress and we apply some factor of safety to the strength of the material in this so remember friends this is a very important point in working stress method we apply factor of safety to the strength of the material and whereas in limit state method we apply the factor of safety to the loads but whereas partial safety factors are also utilized in working stress uh, sorry limit state method those partial safety factors are uh, something like 1.15 uh, for steel and 1.5 for concrete so these partial safety factors are used to the strength of the material that's why it is called as a partial safety factor whereas safety of factor or else factor of safety is used for uh, the loads which we uh, do the design for so that's why this working stress method is called as the elastic design method so this is the reason why we call it as elastic design method because we are not allowing the material to cross beyond its elastic limit or uh, beyond the region where it uh, disobeys the Hooke's law. So coming to a limit state method friends, in this method we allow the stress strain behavior to uh, both the materials to cross, I mean the actual stress strain curve whatever is there that completely we are going to utilize. And, uh, and the material pro capabilities are not underestimated as as we consider for the working stress method and we do apply some partial safety factors but which is not as much as what we consider uh, consider in working stress method so in working stress method we do consider the allowable stresses as something like this uh, for concrete we consider 0.45 sigma c and whereas for steel we consider 0.6 sigma s this is how we consider for concrete and steel friends and whereas uh, in limit state method we apply some partial safety factor for suppose for concrete the characteristic strength is considered as fck and for that fck we apply some uh, characteristic uh, i mean the partial safety factor something like around f by gamma m that is the partial safety factor for the material and uh, uh, even for the loads uh, we consider consider this as a fd fd is the design strength and whereas design load if you consider for suppose fd is the design load then we multiply a part uh, safety of factor uh, sorry we multiply a factor of safety uh, to the uh, characteristic load means some f into we will consider gamma f this is uh, this gamma f is the partial safety factor appropriate to the nature of loading and the limit state being considered for suppose if you are considering wind load you may consider this gamma f value as lower because it is not going to be sustained throughout the life of the uh, structure but whereas dead load it always sustains throughout the life of the uh, structure so we consider a higher value that gamma f will be sometimes 1.5 uh, as well so this is how we uh, make this uh, uh, limit state method more nearer to the reality and also that is the reason why we call this method as the plastic design method friends and the next difference is the ultimate load carrying capacity cannot be predicted accurately why i am saying this in working stress method means in working stress method we consider uh, a material to be yielded uh, or a material to be failed once it reaches the yield stress and beyond that it do have some uh, capacity to withstand the uh, additional load so how much capacity or how much margin we are maintaining in that material that we cannot calculate because uh, we have we do not have any uh, quantitative uh, method or uh, to calculate that uh, extra margin what we have and whereas in limit state method the ultimate stresses of materials itself so whatever we consider the ultimate stress that is fu for steel or even for concrete also we consider itself as the allowable stress 
so that is the reason why we know how much margin we do have by knowing the load factors what we consider so that gamma f value what i have discussed so that will help us in knowing what is the margin we do have in the structure and based on that we can understand whether this structure is safe or not or else if you need any additional uh, uh, load or if you do have any additional load whether it can withstand or not you can easily calculate using this limit sheet method and coming to the next difference that is uh, this method gives more large sections therefore it is less economical whereas uh, limit sheet method is uh, very much economical because we use this uh, method for getting or we use this method such that we consider the complete strength or complete reserve strength of the material and coming uh, to the last one that is the difference of uh, working stress and limit state it is that working stress method assumes that the actual loads permissible stresses and the factor of safety have been understood so it is a deterministic method so here we know what exactly the actual load what is the permissible stress and the, what is the factor of safety so as we know all of this we consider this as a very deterministic method and uh, we are very much clear in our theory but whereas in the limit state method friends this is completely a probabilistic approach so if you uh, understand this limit state method the characteristic strength itself is uh, defined as the probability means uh, if you see our code is456 it clearly says the term characteristic strength means that the value of the strength of the material below which not more than 5% of the test results are expected to fall so this is something like 0.95 as the probability so he this is a completely a probabilistic approach this theory appeared to be based on various uncertainties in the design which could be handled more rationally in the mathematical framework of probability theory so the risk involved in this design was quantified in terms of a probability of failure that's why we call it as a probabilistic approach and and also we call it as a non deterministic approach so this non deterministic approach is also called as uh, limit state method and in addition to these friends in working stress method we consider this to be a very simple in concept and uh, it also has an advantage that this method is very much helpful in investigating the reinforced concrete sections especially in serviceability and service stresses so basically even till today we follow for uh, crack width and for uh, creep study uh, we always follow this working stress method because in this limit state method what happens friends we see large uh, deflections or large uh, deformations because uh, the structure goes beyond the elastic region means it performs or it performs in the plastic region but the negative part in working stress method is uh, the real strength of structure is not utilized which i, I have already told you uh, coming to this limit state method friends we do have some demerits as well like something it is like not simple in its concept and doesn't take the effect of creep and shrinkage and also the crack width etc and also it is quite erroneous uh, because uh, the redistribution of stresses see once the plastic hinge forms in the plastic region what happens the redistribution of stresses happen but this philosophy uh, is completely ignored and uh, we are proceeding without uh, considering this redistribution of stresses so and also coming to its merits it is very much economical and uh, uh, this method relies on the ultimate strain as the failure criteria so if you see the stress strain distribution diagrams friends here which i have drawn in the right side this one and this one so this is for working stress method the first one and the second one is for the limit state method so in working stress method we do consider the modular ratio modular ratio is uh, the ratio of the elastic modulus of steel to that of concrete so that modular ratio we consider and an equivalent concrete section we draw here so this is what i have drawn here friends this is an additional concrete instead of steel so considering that i have drawn this and as i have already discussed the stress is always considered to be linear so here you can clearly understand this is a linear uh, distribution whereas in limit state method we can clearly see this is a non linear stress distribution so this also you can notice friends it is non linear 
and uh, coming to the allowable stresses here sigma cbc we consider based on uh, the caudal provisions whereas for sigma st also you consider 0.6 times sigma s something like that so <clears throat> Here, whereas in limit state method, you see that complete tensile stress is taken by the steel um, and at the same time the strain distribution here, the strain itself is considered to be the failure criteria as I have already discussed. So, once the concrete reaches this particular strain value, then we consider that that is the ultimate point and uh, this is how you will understand uh, in the limit state method so once it reaches this strain this concrete reaches this much amount of strain and at the same time this is the strain in steel the lower portion what you see this is the strain in st steel so here this 0 0.002 is the permanent deformation so uh, this is permanent deformation and this is the elastic deformation so elastic deformation you see here so uh, this is how we can clearly differentiate if we go about this topic we can talk a lot lot many things friends so just to uh, consider this uh, time limit uh, i had to end this here uh, thank you very much i hope you understood this video very well that's all about this video friends and family members if you had any comments queries or if you had any topics in your wish list then please do let me know by commenting in the comment section I hope you like the video. If yes, please do like it. I will be creating more interesting videos like this. Please do subscribe to get updated as soon as I keep posting videos. Share my video to all your friends and family members. Don't forget to press the bell icon.